The reliability of computer systems ultimately relies on the reliability of their components. In this video, we'll concentrate on aging mechanisms related to temperature. The bathtub curve is a well-known curve to describe the failure rates of electronic components over time. Just after manufacturing, we tend to see high failure rates. Marginal components that may have weak wires or weak devices will fail after a few seconds, minutes, or hours of operation. This phase is known as infant mortality. Over the long lifetime, we tend to see low failure rates. But eventually, we see failure rates start to increase. This aging effect is due to a variety of physical and chemical processes that cause the slow deterioration of the electronic components so that they eventually fail. We have a wide range of possible failure mechanisms in integrated circuits. Die metallization related to wiring, corrosion, electromigration, contact spiking, failures of the oxide, failures within the transistors themselves, ionic contamination, surface charge, failures in the packaging, Most of these failure mechanisms increase with temperature. The Arrhenius equation captures the relationship between temperature and chemical process rates. The chemical process rate depends upon the activation energy, which is specific to the chemical process under consideration. It depends upon temperature and Boltzmann's constant, and it depends upon an empirical constant. Our Arrhenius equation covers a broad range of physical mechanisms. One specific example of it is Black's equation, which is a well-known formula for the mean time to failure of wires that are carrying current. The mean time to failure depends upon the activation energy, temperature, Boltzmann's constant, the empirical constant, and current density. We can determine the activation energies for many different failure mechanisms that we see in integrated circuits. Defects in the oxide, drift of ions, slow traps, electromigration, the corrosion of aluminum wires. Since aging depends exponentially on temperature, we should expect that variations in temperature over time as the device operates will affect the overall lifetime of the device. Most complex computer systems don't operate at a constant rate, at a constant power consumption, and therefore they don't operate at a constant temperature. We expect the temperature of a sophisticated processor to vary over time. So that means that at high temperatures we should see these aging processes operate much faster. At lower temperatures we should see the chip age more slowly. We can capture this effect in a lifetime consumption rate based upon the Arrhenius equation. We can then find the total amount of lifetime we've consumed by integrating that life consumption rate over the time period we're studying. One good way to measure temperature on chip is with a diode. The diode current depends upon the temperature of the diode. As the temperature goes up, the current goes up. So we can use the diode to trip a logic gate that will then signal that the chip has reached a certain temperature. Many modern high performance processors use these temperature sensors to ensure that the chip won't overheat. The sensor kicks in at a given temperature T max. At that point, the logic in the processor automatically slows down the processor by a combination of reducing the clock speed and reducing the power supply voltage and perhaps duty cycling the clock. As a result, 
the chip will burn less power and therefore its temperature will decrease, taking it away from the danger zone. To review, many different chemical processes result in aging mechanisms for our electronic components. The Arrhenius equation unifies these different chemical processes and relates temperature to the aging process. We can calculate the aging of a computer system by taking into account the rate at which it consumes its lifetime over a temperature profile.